Thank you very much. Um, so in the project that I'm presenting on my uh, poster, we are actually interested in bacterial persistence. And persistence is actually the formation of a subpopulation of bacteria that are able to survive antibiotic treatment by entering kind of in a, a dormant growth arrested state. And these persister cells can then, when the antibiotic is removed, actually wake up and kind of start growing again, which leads uh, to recurrent bacterial infections. And because the presence of this persister cells means that multiple rounds of antibiotic treatment are needed for the clearance of the infection, and this can actually contribute to antimicrobial resistance. And one of the, uh, there's evidence that one of the biochemical mechanisms underlying this persistence formation are actually toxin antitoxin systems. And uh, we are interested in the DOC toxin, a PhD antitoxin system in Salmonella. And in, in a normal state, the antitoxin forms like a stable complex with the toxin. Uh, but upon uh, stress, for example, antibiotic treatment, the antitoxin can be degraded, which actually releases the toxin. And the, the toxic activity then leads to the growth arrest and actually induces the uh, persister state in some of the bacteria. And the activity of the DOC toxin is actually, that we are interested in, is actually a kinase activity. So it phosphorylates the uh, EFTU uh, uh, elongation factor. And this phosphorylated translation elongation factor is inactive. So there's no protein translation anymore. So the cells enter in a growth arrest. So the question we want to answer in our project is now, uh, basically, um, can we um, design like a PhD? Sorry, let's see. Can we design like a PhD antitoxin-based inhibitor that is able to inactivate the DOC toxin and therefore kind of prevent or reverse persister formation in Salmonella and therefore tackle actually this recurrent infection? And there's some there was some structural information available for a different organism which actually showed that the C-terminal part of the antitoxin protein is responsible for binding to the DOC toxin. And we generated like a homology model of the Salmonella variants, showing here the C-terminal PhD peptide bound to the uh, DOC toxin in kind of a helical conformation. And the peptide has like these two helical segments that are separated by kind of a kink in the middle. And we actually synthesized this peptide and wanted to know uh, if it is actually an inhibitor so we performed kind of a Western blood assay. So we incubated the DOC toxin together with the PhD peptide and the target EFTU and checked for phosphorylation of the EFTU. And we could see that at concentration of the peptide equal to the DOC toxin, we don't see any phosphorylation of the EFTU anymore. So it's actually able to inhibit the DOC toxin activity, which was great to see. And we also checked the direct binding between the peptide inhibitor and the DOC toxin. Uh, by surface plasma resonance analysis. And we found that it's a very tight interaction with a dissociation constant of around 70 picomolar. So it's a very, very tight uh, complex. So with this information, we were interested to see which are actually the residues in the peptide sequence that are responsible for this binding uh, interaction. And therefore we performed an alanine scan of the peptide. So substituting each uh, amino acid with alanine and then check, uh, measured the binding of all these variants by SPR. And we actually found five hotspot residues in the PhD peptide sequence here in red that are distributed over the whole sequence. So these uh, residues are contributing most to the binding interaction. And they, are, they can be uh, found in both the N-terminal and the C-terminal peptide segment. And in order to, to go in the direction of developing already a more drug-like molecule, we were also interested to figure out the minimal active sequence of our peptide inhibitor. So based on the full length peptide sequence, uh, we prepared truncated peptides and checked also the affinity, the binding affinity of these truncated peptides to uh, DOC toxin by SPR. So when we truncated the peptide on either the C-terminus or the N-terminus, we could still see nice binding affinity to the toxin. And also when we truncated the peptide on both sides, uh, we still saw binding in the picomolar range, although we lost some binding affinity for kind of the shorter uh, version. But interestingly, when we cut the peptide in half, basically, at the king to just have the N-terminal or the C-terminal uh, um, helical uh, half, we, we didn't see any binding anymore of both of these fragments, which was actually quite interesting. And we also checked the activity of these truncated peptides using a similar assay as the Western blot that I showed before, but kind of now in a dot blot format. Uh, so we, we incubated dog toxin with EFTU target and the peptide, and then spotted the whole mixture on the membrane 
and check for phosphorylation of the EFTU. And what we could see here is that the peptides uh, that are truncated on either the N terminus or the C terminus are as active as the Y type peptide. So they are inhibitors of the doc toxin. But interestingly, the peptides truncated on both sides or also the, the, the peptide halves were inactive. So they were not able to inhibit the doc toxin anymore. So overall, we, we could uh, uh, gain some nice insights into the uh, PhD antitoxin doc toxin interaction in Salmonella. And we are currently optimizing our peptide inhibitor. And we're also preparing the actual measurement of the biological activity. So to see if they can actually prevent a persistent formation in Salmonella. Yeah, thank you very much.